Welcome everyone to our Hopkins Region service today. Today um, is our communion service too across our region, so if you uh, want to get yourselves ready for that, you might want to pause and then you can come back when you're ready. So we also, as we usually do, begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land. The different owners of the land on the different places that we live we pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We honour their care of the land. We acknowledge that we have benefited from their dispossession. We can't change the past, but we can change the future. And so we commit ourselves to reconciliation and justice as first and second peoples together. Let us pray. Dear God, as we connect to this service, May we also connect in spirit with you, to hear your quiet voice within us, to recognise your hidden presence within and around us, and to taste your goodness in all things. May we be encouraged and hope-filled in these challenging times, and lead us further into who you call us and need us to be in this world. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're now going to sing a song um, the song, Just the Sound. Just the sound of crashing waves Reminds me of your love Creation's call you You are Lord of every
that song, it says, just the sound of the crashing waves reminds us of God's love for us. There's a very famous and very old cartoon of Michael Looney where he's a man pointing to the TV set, showing his little boy and out at a sunrise. And then out the window, there is the sunrise. Um, so often when we come to church, we uh, praise God, but we could be doing it outside. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to invite you to now pause your telly and go outside and take a minute. You might like to even shut your eyes and just listen to what can be heard. Then when you come back in and you press the pause button again and set the show, that made the service, going, I'll lead you in a prayer then. Let's pray. Dear God, we spend so much time busy doing things, achieving our goals and ticking things off our lists, or tuned in to entertainment and at the end of the day flopping into bed to get some sleep. We miss so much of the simple things where true life is found. We don't need more blessings. We just need to appreciate more the ones you give us. We give our praise and thanks for the wonders that are all around us, the reminders that you do send us, and all that you give us and are for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, today's Gospel reading is from Matthew 13, verses 47 to 50. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of life, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this reading, with its weeping and gnashing of teeth, comes as the last of a run of parables that Jesus told in Matthew's Gospel here in chapter 13 about the kingdom of God. The other ones are about growth. They're about an, the kingdom being an opportunity not to be missed. But here we have this one, which is about judgment, separation, the burning in the fire that conjures up all these medieval sort of pictures of hell. I remember as a child lying in bed wondering, well, who gets saved? Who's going to be in and who's going to be out? It was a bit of a worry because my grandparents weren't Christians. What would happen to them? And then I'd think about, what about the people of other faiths? What about the people that lived before Jesus? What about the people that live in the world now that never get a chance to hear about him? And then later, perhaps, thinking about, well, what about the people who've been desperately hurt by the church? And in the first part of this year, we've had our discipleship learning community here where we've been studying the New Testament and reading right through the New Testament again. I was reminded just how often it does speak of judgment. And yet, in our preaching, in what we uh, do in church, we say so little about judgment. So what I'd like to do is to, to perhaps share my thinking at this stage of my life spiritual journey. So we'll have a look at a whole lot of different pieces of scripture, some just some verses chosen um, from among many, and I think it's a bit like a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. So here's our one that we had from our reading from Matthew 13, the kingdom of heaven is like the net where you get all the fish, keep the good ones toss out the bad ones. There's some more things about judgment too in our scripture. So in Hebrews 4.13 it says, There is nothing that can be hid from God. Everything in all creation is exposed and lies open before his eyes, and it is to him that we must give an account of ourselves. And again in Hebrews, in chapter 9, verse 7, 
Everyone must die once, and after that, be judged by God. And if you think of Jesus' Beatitudes, he talks about rewards and even those who might um, give just a glass of water to someone in need will receive their reward. And then in that big chapter in Matthew 25, he talks about the righteous people who are, and the separation like the sheep and the goats and the righteous on the right and the unrighteous on his left. And the ones who have are righteous are the ones who have helped those in need. The king says to the people on his right, come you that are blessed by my father, come and possess the kingdom which has been prepared for you since the creation of the world. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me in your homes, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me in prison and you visited me. These are the ones that are welcomed. So that sort of gave me a bit of an answer that, well, it's those who care for others that get in with God when they die. But we all do some good and we all do some refusing to do good. So where's the boundary? Where's, how good do you have to be? Because we are all a mix. Then when you read Paul in Romans and, and many of his letters, and as was rediscovered at the Reformation, it's not about how much good we do. It's about trusting in God's grace. And so in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we have this great summary of that. For it is by God's grace that we are saved through faith. It's not the result of our own efforts, but God's gift so that no one can boast about it. So we've got this other piece of the jigsaw puzzle. But that doesn't answer it. For what about those who've never heard, who've never had that chance to trust in Jesus? There's another interesting part in 1 Corinthians 3 too that reads like this. And the quality of each person's work will be seen when the day of Christ exposes it. For on that day fire will reveal everyone's work. The fire will test it and show its real quality. If what was built on the foundation survives the fire, the builder will receive a reward. If your work is burnt up, then you will lose it. But you yourself will be saved as if you had escaped through fire. So that sort of sounds like with God's judgment that everything's tested, that we might be saved and yet only just by the skin of our teeth if we haven't lived the good life. But then there's another one here from 1 Timothy 4. This is a true saying, to be completely accepted and believed. We struggle and work hard because we have placed our hope in the living God, who is the saviour of all, and especially those who believe. So maybe that sounds like everyone in the end is saved. It's a bit of a confusing mix trying to find how the pieces all fit together. And then there's another one too, from 1 Peter 3, 19 and 20. For Christ died for sins once and for all, a good man on behalf of sinners, in order to lead you to God. He was put to death physically, but made alive spiritually. And in his spiritual existence, he went and preached to the imprisoned spirits. These were the spirits of those who had not obeyed God. Now that comes from a bit of a, you know, not the central part of the New Testament. But maybe that's giving us a hint that there is another chance beyond this. But yes, how do we fit the jigsaw puzzle all together? Now, 
because we're all at home perhaps a bit more and there's daytime television when we're home, I had an idea that has sort of put this together of how God's judgment works. And that was watching Dr. Phil. Now, Dr. Phil, I think you've seen the show, he has these people that come in and usually one of them's a delinquent, it might be a delinquent young person or it might be an irresponsible parent or it might be an abusive partner. And they come on and, and the people tend to accuse each other of, of this bad behaviour. And Dr Phil then speaks to them. They try and justify themselves and often there's witnesses that will come in and to um, back up the story. And often there's people that we would like to see judged on that show. The way Dr. Phil does it, he exposes the truth. And they just can't, you just can't argue with Dr. Phil and win. But what Dr. Phil also does, he affirms what's good in what people do. And he doesn't condemn the wrongdoing. But he then looks into the background and explores why a person might be like that. And then, in Dr. Phil's compassion, he offers them some assistance. And so they often could go off to some ranch or somewhere where there's psychologists and all these people that will work with them to help them get through whatever the issues are. And just about everybody agrees to do what Dr. Phil has for them. Now, Dr. Phil's not perfect, and sometimes on the show I've sort of thought, oh, all he's doing is promoting a product here. But in what I see of Dr. Phil is a bit of how I see God's judgment. There is truth telling. The whole story comes out. But we find understanding. We find God's grace. And we have Jesus as our advocate, our scriptures tell us, against those who would accuse us. The good is rewarded and what is bad within us is pruned or a bit like you know, the person that races through the fire and what gets burnt off but they survived. So when it comes to my understanding at this time of God's judgment, grace and goodness of God includes all people in salvation. But there's another side to it too in this reading. And I think that what we do is we tend to underestimate how much Jesus was talking about the situation of his time with the Roman military occupation of his country. And that reading from Matthew, it actually talked about, not about when we die so much, as the end of the age. Which doesn't mean, I think, the end of the world but it's about a big change in how the world works, an end of an empire or a change in the dominant culture. Interesting that you know, they talk about this being the Anthropocene age where humans dominate the ecology of the world and are putting it at risk. And here we are too in this time of pandemic. But it's an exciting time to live at the end of an age. And maybe what we are going to see in this is a step up, a progress to a new era when our world becomes just that bit more like the kingdom of God. Now I might have told you this story before about my first bike lesson. When uh, I was probably about six or seven years old, with some friends, put on the bike, and you know, I was like, oh, let's, how am I gonna keep the balance? And so put me on and pushed me off. You know, I went down Cherry Street in Baldwin. And, oh, but what about the brakes? How do I stop? And uh, they pedal backwards. Oh, I'm trying, I'm trying. And in the end, somebody had to grab me and fling me off the bike and I finished up all on the, on the nature strip a bit scraped and sore. But if they hadn't done that, I would have gone straight down into Whitehorse Road and would have been collected by a car or a truck or a tram or something. Maybe that's what's happening in our world at the moment. 
just, yeah, we're a bit of battered and sore, but maybe this pandemic is going to change things for us so that we step up to be even more of a world of the kingdom of, as the kingdom of God. And so in that reading, it's, sometimes it's, I think, mistranslated to say that it's like the good people that will be kept and the bad people will go in the fiery furnace. But I think what the real translation is that it is good, good things. What is good in the world that is kept and what is evil is removed. Now I'd like you to join with us as we share this affirmation of faith. The good news from Jesus that we want our community to know is that we don't have to be afraid of our past. We don't need to lie about it, deny it, cover it up or find others to blame. And we don't have to run or hide from God or convince ourselves God doesn't exist for fear of being judged. The past can't be changed and whatever was wrong is forgiven when it is acknowledged and we accept that grace. Jesus showed us a God of understanding, compassionate love who respects our freedom but will go to any length to have us share eternal life with God. This can start now in this life. We can be free of our regrets and if we allow ourselves to be caught up in the great spirit we can be who we truly are and be fully alive. So welcome once again to online communion. We recognise this is different, isn't it? It's um, like a lot of things in life these days, and especially in these times. It's not the same as being present, we know. But we thank God that we can still celebrate in this way. And that this is a special meal that even when we can't be together, we can celebrate our togetherness in the body of Christ wherever we are. So as we share in this meal today, even though we may be at home or even on our own, be very conscious of the rest of the body of Christ that you are sharing with. And not only in this Hopkins region, but with all people of every time and place, and even those who have gone before us. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it's right, right to, to give, give our thanks, thanks and praise. We give our thanks and praise, O Lord, for you alone are worthy. Though we fell short of your way for us, we thank you for the assurance 
that Jesus represents us before the throne of grace. So that no matter what judgment we might face, Jesus stands by us and for us and wins for us your salvation. So in this good news, we worship you and celebrate in confidence with the people of every time and place in the eternal hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To Adam and Eve, children of dust, you gave the world and its wonders. But we misused your gift, and with restless hearts, we turned against you and against one another. Again and again, you called us through your prophets to practice justice and care for the vulnerable and disadvantaged. Then you sent Jesus Christ to reconcile us to you and to one another. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up to death, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When the meal was ended, he lifted the cup and again, giving you thanks, gave it to his friends and said, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed by my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, for the remembrance of me. So Lord, by your word and by your Holy Spirit, bless these gifts, that we may truly share Christ's body and blood and become, by grace, his body given for the sake of the world. For through your spirit, the whole earth makes its prayer in sighs too deep for words, longing for the day of freedom, for in hope and by faith we were saved. Accept our thanks and praise, good Father, through your Son, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, with whom and in whom and by the Spirit who dwells in us, we worship you. And now let us share together in the prayer that we've been taught to pray together. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us receive what we are. Let us become what we receive. The body of Christ. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. And the bread that we break is a sharing together in the body of Christ. And the cup that we take, a sharing together in the blood of Christ.
Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, that you have united us with Christ, and that you have given us a foretaste of the heavenly kingdom. We thank you for the assurance of our salvation and that you have called us to share your life in the world. Send us out in your peace, we pray. In the name of Christ, amen. join together in prayer with the prayers of the people. Dear God, as we pray these prayers, remember, we remember that we're joining our prayers with others and the Holy Spirit interprets what we cannot even put into words within your heart of love. You know us at depths we don't even understand ourselves. You know we try to be good but we're a mess of conflicting feelings and desires inside us and we're caught up in the oppressive and corrupt systems of this world. Wash us with your grace and work within us to gently untangle our motives and actions. Affirm your presence and all that is good and reflects you in our lives. We pray for our world in this crisis. Protect us. Protect our healthcare workers and those who work and, and who, whose work and service puts them at risk. We think especially of residents and staff at nursing homes and meat workers and those that work in schools. Help heal those who have the virus. Comfort the bereaved and calm the fearful. We also pray for those who are in hospital and unwell at the moment and seeking treatment is also much harder than this virus. We pray for our governments as they work to support those who've lost their jobs and businesses. Bless them with goodwill and wisdom. We give thanks that in this time they have put the health of people ahead of the economy. We pray for those missing out on, for, on support and for all those who are suffering. May we all find hope and solidarity in caring. We pray earnestly for those huddled in refugee camps and in countries and cities that lack the protection and support that we have. Bless leaders worldwide with goodwill and good sense. Forgive us all for allowing poverty in our world. With your grace, bring us through this to a new world, order of justice, equity, respect and sustainability. Those words of Jesus' prayer burn in us today. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as in heaven. Save us in this time of trial. And in prayer, we share our personal concerns with you, even secrets no one else knows. We ask your blessing on all whom we love in their name. Bless our church community in these times to hang together and still be a help and provide hope for our neighbours. May our prayers be a power of love to those we cannot touch. We offer ourselves and all we have in grateful thanks to serve you in our spirituality, in action and giving in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. And we've talked about judgment today, and this is a song of judgment, but it's also good news. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, because we can face it with confidence. Let's sing together, Mine eyes have seen the glory.
you'll never come retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. He may strip my soul to answer him, did you know it? Christ was born across the sea With the glory in his bosom Which transfigures truly As he died to make them holy But has lived to make them free Our God is marching Thanks everyone for tuning in and being part of our service today and thanks to Malcolm and Jan for your help in putting this together. And we finish with this blessing. Be concerned and care about the suffering in the world. Do the right thing. But also be hopeful. Look for the good that's happening. Live with trust that God is working out his big picture of love and the blessing for all of the earth and the life beyond. In the name of Christ. Amen. Just the sound of crashing waves reminds me of your love. Creation's call you. You are Lord of every. Thank you.